Okay, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is uh, Professor Steve Kerrigan, and I'd like to welcome you all here tonight um, to our new academic building um, uh, for the My Health Lecture on Fighting the Silent Killer and um, Saving Lives from Sepsis. Um, and I'd also like to uh, welcome those who've joined online um, to our live uh, stream. Uh, you're most welcome uh, here tonight as well. Um, so we have developed these uh, public lectures uh, to enable people to take charge of their own health uh, with the vision of trying to improve both their physical and the mental, mental health and uh, well-being. Um, and this really can only be done through structured, um, uh, focused education um, and promotion of signs and symptoms of a, of a range of different um, uh, conditions and uh, diseases. Um, and this is our aim tonight, is to try and empower you uh, with the knowledge necessary to be able to spot one of the biggest killers um, around the world, um, and mostly um, uh, so here in Ireland as well. Um, one thing I just need to say right now is that RTE Primetime are here, and um, they're recording it um, uh, live, or they're recording it over here, it's not live, they're recording it over here and uh, they will be doing pan shots of the audience as well. So just to let you know about that. Okay, so um, I'll start off. Um, so why are we here tonight? We're here because every 20 seconds, somebody in the world dies from sepsis. If we think about that for the next 90 minutes that we're going to be here, 600 people are going to die in the world from a preventable death. The key thing is, sepsis is preventable. But whilst we're sitting here tonight, 600 people across the world will have died from that preventable cause. If we bring that a little bit closer home to Ireland, three people in Ireland will have died by half seven tonight. And that is before we finish this evening. Three people, again, because of a preventable condition that we know of as sepsis. So how bad is it in Ireland? Well, in 2016, which are the closest figures that we have from the Central Statistics Office right now, um, there was about 15,000 diagnosed patients in Ireland with sepsis in 2016. There was almost 3,000 of those patients died from sepsis. And that's really only what we know. That's only what has been recorded. Often sepsis is not recorded on a death cert. So we can't follow it up as that was the actual cause of death, was through sepsis. So it's very likely that these numbers are wrong. It's not just a problem in Ireland, this is across the world that we have this problem of underreporting of sepsis. And this is part of the problem because people don't know what sepsis is. They don't know what sepsis is because they haven't heard the word, because the word is not used. It's not used in the community and it's rarely used in the hospital as well because people don't know much about it. This is a huge problem because the instance of sepsis is growing at a rate of 8% per year. So our three people who will have died tonight in the hour and a half that we're here, that will move to four and a half people this time next year. And that number is going to continue to grow. But at the moment we see the instance rate growing at about 8% per year. Sepsis is a huge killer in Ireland. As I said, there was almost 3,000 deaths from sepsis in 2016. That's more deaths than heart attack. That's more deaths than lung cancer. That's more deaths than breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer. And if you want to put that in a little bit more context, take the numbers of breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer, put all those numbers together, you still don't get the amount of people who died from sepsis. And yet, people still don't know the signs and symptoms of sepsis, even though it's a major killer here. And it's because of that that leading uh, conservative estimates around the world indicate that sepsis is a leading cause of death and critical illness worldwide. So what that means is that sepsis is up there with cardiovascular disease, with the total amounts of, of cases of people who would have died from cardiovascular disease, the total number of people who died from cancer around the world. Sepsis is up there in a category of its own. In fact, if we look closer at the figures, up to 60% of hospital deaths had a sepsis or an infection diagnosis in Ireland. 
their HSE figures. So what is the definition of sepsis? What, what has actually gone wrong in sepsis? So sepsis occurs when an infection gets into the bloodstream. Your own body's uh, defense system, which is called the immune system, spins out of control trying to clear that infection. And in doing so, in trying to, to clear that infection, major organs become damaged. So we're talking about the heart, the lungs, the liver, kidneys, the brain. The major organs in the body all start to become damaged. And it's these sort of complications can either be short-lived or they can be permanent. And if they cause permanent damage to our organs, it leads to multiple organ failure. And that is the complication and the problem that we have with sepsis. There are many ways in which an infection can get into a bloodstream. One way could be through a, a cut or a scrape or a graze. Um, or it could be due to an open wound in your skin. So it can be as simple as that. What I want to do is I want to go through some of the myths that are surround sepsis. And one of the myths that is out there is that sepsis actually affects women more than men. That's not true. It doesn't affect women more than men. In fact, our Irish figures suggest that it's maybe slightly higher in males than it is in females. So that myth about women being more um, at risk is not true. And that is throughout the years. You can see here from 2011 right up to 2016. It's a consistent trend that men are slightly higher than women. Age is not a factor. The myth here is that sepsis only affects the elderly. It doesn't only affect the elderly. It affects every single age group, from a child the whole way up to the elderly. There is no age group whatsoever that is able to escape sepsis. Sepsis can catch anybody healthy or ill at any age group at all. You only get sepsis in hospital. That's not true. In fact, a staggering 92% of sepsis cases occur in the community, not in hospital. So it's not a hospital problem. This is a community problem. This is a problem where the public need to be able to spot signs and symptoms of this condition to be able to reduce that 92%. And that is the reason why we're here tonight, is to learn more about that and to get that figure reduced. What are the symptoms? So the symptoms would typically be that of the flu. And this is part of the problem with sepsis. So the symptoms we're talking about are shivering, fever, or being very cold, extreme pain or general discomfort. There might be pain or discolored skin, so the skin might be mottled, it might be um, discolored, it could be purple. The patient might be sleepy or confused or difficult to arouse. The statement which would be the clincher here is that this is the sickest I have ever felt. I've never felt this sick. That's a big statement for somebody to make. And then finally, shortness of breath and a rapid heartbeat. In case you haven't spotted, we've just spelt out sepsis. These are the signs and symptoms that you need to look out for. So what is the difference between the flu symptoms and sepsis? The symptoms that you see here in sepsis happen very quickly. In the flu, they'll come, come in, you know, over maybe a couple of days you start to feel this. But in sepsis, it happens very quickly. In fact, from the first sign of infection to organ failure and death can be as short as 12 to 24 hours. Flu would never catch that quick. Sepsis absolutely will. There is a window of opportunity here of early recognition that sepsis might be occurring. And that can be prevented by the administration of antibiotics and fluid. That can only be done in the hospital. So the earlier that the signs and symptoms are recognised, the quicker that patient can get to hospital, the quicker we can in, um, initiate that treatment. In fact, for every one hour in delay in treatment from the first signs of, of infection, there is an 8% increase in mortality. So you can see how quickly um, you need to get to hospital if you do have these signs and symptoms. And the most important thing, if the message, the only message to take away this evening is ask the four words that could save your life, and that is, could it be sepsis? That should be the first thing that comes into your mind when you have these signs and symptoms, could it be sepsis? 
So what are we doing at a global level? Well, the global standing on sepsis is quite clear. And only last year, in May last year, the World Health Assembly um, met in uh, Geneva in, and made a decision. And so it's, so the World Health uh, Assembly is the decision-making uh, body of the World Health Organization. And it's attended by delegates from the 205 member states um, in the world. And in September 2017, just gone by a couple of months ago, they now have made sepsis a global health priority. <coughs> this is the best outcome that could have happened in this field of research, in this field of medicine. Because now the World Health Organisa Organization is now committed to funding uh, research in sepsis, it's committed to promotion of the signs and symptoms of, of sepsis, and they are committed to reducing the death rate of sepsis across the world. Okay, so that's enough for me. I just wanted to give the hard facts. So the agenda that we have tonight is um, uh, next to speak will be Mr. Kieran Staunton from the Rory Staunton Foundation. Following this, then we are going to have Professor Ger Curley, who's a consultant in critical care medicine in Beaumont Hospital. And finally, then we will have Dr. Fel uh, Fidelma Fitzpatrick, who's a consultant microbiologist, again, who is in uh, Beaumont uh, Hospital here in Dublin. Um, and at the end, then, we're going to have an expert panel discussion where I'll invite all our speakers um, up to the front here. And we can open this up to the floor. So if anybody has any questions, um, our experts are, are happy to um, uh, take some of those uh, uh, questions. For those people who are online tonight, if you would like to submit questions via the social media, um, through Facebook or through Twitter, um, they can be given up to me and we can ask some of those questions um, uh, to, the, uh, to our expert panel. Thank you.